Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a screeching bass, like something you might hear in modern EDM or something. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just choose the oscillators. I'm going to take two of them. In this case, there's one. Here's the other one. I'll set these to sine, but to be honest, you could set these to something else also. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge them together. You can use the mixer or the merger. I prefer the merger personally, but like I said, whichever you want's fine. And here I'll use steal the input because you see now it's going out two. I don't want that to happen. I want them both to go out. Just output one. So now I have it and it just sounds like a sine wave. Not too interesting. What we actually want to make the screeching sound is I want a pitch increase. So I'm going to go to the semitones here. And I'll use attack one. And now you see it's going down, but I want to switch that. And go up. So one of the things you might want to do is actually save this. I save this as up default. So this is normal default and this is up default. Just to save yourself some time in the future. Because you might want to do this again. And we can change this. Let's change this to about like 250 or so. Somewhere around there. And now we're going to turn the depth up. Now I want this to be a, I guess, whole number, not really a whole number. I want this to be an octave. So as it is now here, you can see the semitones. If I set this to 50 here, 50%, 50 that's 48 semitones, which is four octaves. So let's hear it. You hear like, okay, I can hear the high notes and I can hear the low notes, which you hear with the screech bass. But the problem is it's like, okay, well, it's not screeching. So to make it screech, we need some distortion. There's a few things we can do. I could use the saturator here like this. And let's see, make sure when you do this, turn the output down. And then I can turn the input up here. There we go, there's our screeching. And from here, we can adjust things like I can mess with this analog, uh, not, or actually not slider. I can also adjust the individual harmonics here. From there, we can try something else too. We could also try the wave folder. This is interesting if you want more of a digital character. I'll turn the output down again. And let's try, try turning the drive up. So, we can mess with that if you like that one. But another one I want to use is the one we used in the last video is the oscillator shaper. So, I'm going to use this. Uh, there's also distortion and things in here. So, do with these what you want. You can choose whichever one suits you the best. I'll turn down the volume here and do the same thing. Turn the input up. Now you might be asking, why did you use this one? Why did you use the oscillator shaper? And the reason is, is because we can do things like mess with the transform here. So the pulse width modulation, let's move that up. Or I can do things with the bend, for example. So there's all sorts of things you can do with that. Another thing I should mention is this, you can change the actual oscillators here. So now I have two sine waves, but I could change this to two square waves if I wanted to. Like this, although this, this will probably be a bit harsh. Let me turn the input down. Now, one thing you'll probably notice is like, hey, I kind of hear something at the top. It's not so pleasant. This will sometimes cause aliasing. So what we can do here is go into the globals and you see the quality is on high. You think, oh, okay, well, that's as high as it can go, right? And it's like, no, you can go up way higher. So this is on high. This is extreme. You see, the extreme sounds a little bit more clear. Some of the... Uh, 
like nastiness is taken away. So I recommend always messing with this and trying this. I probably won't do this for this whole video because I don't want to mess up my screen recording. But if you want to do that, you can check out how it sounds. And if you're like me, you're like, ah, I need some of that CPU. Use the quality and set it on high or medium while you're actually producing and recording. And then when you want to render it, just change the rendering quality here. So that way it renders out and it sounds perfect. So I just thought I'd kind of show you that. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's, let's try triangle wave instead. Okay. And as I said, you can mess with the transform modes here in the oscillator shaper. But you can also change the shape itself. So we can use uh, something here. So these are keys. This is like an electric piano sound. Yeah, that, that's good and nasty. So there we have that. And if we want to make it even nastier, now we're going up exactly four octaves. But what we can do is we can actually use this sense over here. We could manipulate this and not go up four octaves, but I think it's easier sometimes just manipulate the sense to make this uh, inharmonic and then really it'll start going crazy. I can do the same thing to the other one here. That's semitone, sorry. But of course you can mess with the semitones here like this. But of course, it's gonna make your low, your uh, bass sound out of tune, so you may not wanna do that. But you could mess with it here like this on the other one that's moving up. So if you want harsher sounds, you can definitely do something with that. Uh, another thing I should mention here is the oscillator shaper and everything. We're in the generator now. So it is actually possible to take this and uh, use it with chords, although I don't know how good it's gonna sound. Yeah, that's not sounding great. Maybe I should move back to this. So like I said, you can do that with the uh, multiple notes, you can do it polyphonically if you don't want to do that. And if you want to do it monophonically, just switch it to mono. Like that. And, okay, let me bend it a little bit more. If you want this to be more stereo, we can go into here and we can use something like a chorus if we wanted to. Uh, let's see here, I don't want 10. Move this down a bit, uh, get a little bit faster. See how this sounds? <laughs> Maybe I don't want the delay in the low end, so I'll move the minimum up. You can mess with that. We could add other things too. We could have even more distortion to it if we want to do that. Uh, another thing we could do is we could add a stereo widener. Uh, we could even change some of the sounds. I could have one as a triangle and one as a, I don't know, square wave. Do I want that? And that's where I want to use some of the quality enhancements. Sounds much better than this. Although, to be honest, that actually sounds kind of cool. I actually like it buzzing there with the aliasing. But you can choose that and do whatever you want uh, to get some cool sounds. And of course, you can add any other effects in here. Sometimes it's cool to add like a bit crusher or even more distortion here. If you think, ah, this one, I don't like this. I just want to use a normal saturator and I'm going to do it in mono. You can put the distortion here or the saturator here in the FX section and that'll actually save you some CPU. So that's another small tip. So I hope I gave you some ideas on how you can make your own screech basses. You can make one that's somewhat tame like this. Okay, that's actually not that tame, that's kind of wild. But I hope I gave you some ideas on how, how you can change the sounds and mess with it yourself so you can come up with your own unique screech bass and maybe even some other ideas too. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those down below. Check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. And until next time, see you.